and uh okay you should get a message saying we're recording we record all of our meetings for our members so they anyone that's a member has a private link to this generally i get the recording to warn within a day or two so it'll be up within two to three days at the most on our website so there, there's a definite advantage of joining St. Louis Publishers Association. You have access to several excellent speeches by our monthly presenters. All righty, so let's get going here. Uh, uh, first thing, uh, Zoom, if you're not totally familiar with Zoom, uh, you know, you have your window there and look at all our smiley faces. And so on the bottom, you have like the mute button. The, the video button if you want to turn your camera off. Uh, about halfway in the middle, there's a chat tab that can pull up on the right side of your screen to chat and you can uh, like put links in and the, you know just different things uh, in there. And so let's get started though. My name's Warren Martin and welcome. I'm the president of the St. Louis uh, Publisher Association. And so glad to see everybody here tonight. Uh, we are a, um, for those of you that are new on here, we're a nonprofit. Uh, we do these monthly meetings. We used to do them in person and we start doing the Zoom. That's worked out real well. And we always try to come up with a topic each month uh, related to writing and publishing. Uh, so we always have, you know, you know, interesting topics all related to, you know, getting your book published, uh, whether you're starting or in the middle or, you know, and we have a lot of published authors also in our group. So, you know, we've got a, a good mix of experience and that's the, the plus of the organization is the experience factor. We have a whole wide range of people who are just, you know, have a lot of experience and some who are trying to get experience. So it's just a matter of where you are in the publishing, your publishing uh, journey, I guess we could say. Um, I'm gonna share my screen real quick with you. Uh, Oh, go ahead and share. All right, and over here. All right, so our, if you if you are new to us, this is our website, stlouispublishers.org. Um, if if you're not on our email list uh, in the about tab, uh, down at the bottom, you click there and, and sign up for our email list, and that way you'll know what's going on. Uh, we have. Um, you know, future events. We actually got the whole year uh, lined up. Uh, so like our upcoming events, you know, tonight we got Michael here and then next month, uh, we're, oh, what's her name? Eh, Sherry, yeah, Sherry Fink, uh, children's book author, uh, personality person. Uh, so she'll be with us next month. Uh, then in June, all right, we're gonna have Jerry, am I saying that right, Peggy? Jerry? Jerry, yeah, Jerry, Jerry Dreeling. Yeah, or so I don't know if it's dreiling or dreiling, but it's Jerry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, navigate your marketing, you'll have success. Uh, we all, and then uh, July, our regular meeting, uh, we're also going to have a how to write a memoir. And then we also have in July, um, all right, uh, for those of you uh, who know Jane Friedman, uh, she's going to do a, uh, on a Saturday, July 17th, a two hour uh, webinar with us covering uh, you know website and email newsletters. So uh, she's a high demand person. We were able to snag her and get her in here. Uh, so that information will be on our website and, and the emails probably within the next couple of weeks uh, for a ticket. You know, if you're a member, it'll be free. If you're not a member, uh, you know, be it'll cost a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit. So, all right. And then uh, what else here? Okay, stop sharing. All right, so there I'm back. All right, and then um, so we one of the things we do sometimes is go do a little brag session, uh, you know. Okay, you know. So, but we say keep it short, especially in Zoom land, because we have the power now to cut you off without being too rude in person. So, but if anybody has anything they want, I know Rachel, you you said something when you first came on. If you want to start, just unmute yourself. Uh, yep. Okay. Hi, I'm Rachel Miller, and I have a book um, that I, it's all illustrated. It's called The Illustrated Cocktail, and I just um, launched a Kickstarter campaign yesterday. Um, my goal was $6,500, and I am 85% funded, so that's really cool. I was also chosen as um, 
projects we love and within like three hours. So that was very cool. Um, the book is 180 pages. It's all completely illustrated, hardback book. Um, you know, I can't like have it, I can't get it on Amazon because it's not like a, a novel that you can print it, you know, to, um, what do you call that? Print by demand or whatever. It's just, oh. it's an art book. So um, I have to kind of do it a different way. So this is why I decided to do it. And um, hopefully, you know, it'll pay off. So I'm excited. So if, you, if you're interested in seeing what it looks like, if you go to my website, theillustratedcocktail.com, there's a link to the Kickstarter. Show us the cover. Well, the cover, I don't have the cover. <laughs> it's a QR. Uh, what, what's that? This is just like a thing that has a QR code and kind of, it does have the cover on it, um, but it also has a lot of other things. So just to give you an idea of like, everything is all, it's all, completely illustrate it. There's 65 cocktails. Um, there's um, 180 pages with tri trips and um, tips and tricks. And there's, it's just a whole lot of fun. Like I say, every single page has, is illustrated. It's more of an art piece. I call it a, I call it a, um, an art piece disguised as a cocktail book. Okay. Time's up, but Hey, you're in the right place to get it on Amazon. So uh, all right. Anybody else? Sean? Okay. He put his in the chat. Okay. His is in the chat here. My, uh, my book is out on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. The title is Pure Love, or is it? It's about 300 pages. Uh, longer than I thought, LOL. So congratulations, Sean. Good job. There you go, Sean. Yay. All righty. Anybody else? Yay. Going once. Twice. All right. Um, did I forget any uh, announcements as far as our uh, Kevin or Peggy? or? Peggy? No. Um, the, I could mention that I was at Publishing University. Oh, which yeah. was really a, uh, an eye-opener. And they had over, they had 495 people. It was an online Everything was online. They they put a, um, they used a piece of soft. They used some software called Attendify, which was great. So you could chat with people, and then they had all the Zoom sessions. It was very very eye opening. They one of the most important uh, keynotes that they had was Friday morning. They talked about diversity in publishing. Fascinating, really really fascinating. All right, thank you, Peggy. Okay, so our speaker tonight. Uh, okay, Michael's here. Um, so, whoops, log your book, supercharge your website. Uh, you know, Michael, um, you know, he published his first book, like, you know, The Seven Keys to Marketing Genius, uh, like 10 years, about 10 years ago. And then I guess the you know, he found out the blog, he came up with the blogging idea and has been very successful at what he's doing. Um, on our web, on our, um, homepage, you know, we got his website, but this is his website. Uh, we'll put that in the chat room too. Uh, so he's got a lot of things going on as far as like email campaigns and websites. And um, when we, we let him start here, he can tell us all the other stuff he does and uh, what he's going to do tonight. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I guess we can get going. And uh, like I think you, Kevin, you gave Michael the, uh, the power, right? All righty, so everybody, welcome Michael, and uh, let's get going. Awesome, thanks Warren. Uh, let me just get the uh, screen share going here. Talk amongst yourselves. And mute yourself too while, the, while he's talking so we don't get the background and the dogs and cats and stuff like that going, so. Unless your dog can talk, that would be pretty cool. I'd like yeah. to hear that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me here. Um, I just want to talk about. Let's see. Come on, baby, you can do it. There we go. Uh, how to blog your book and supercharge your website. Pretty exciting. So, table of contents, is, these are the things I'm going to be covering tonight. Pretty fun stuff. 
And then usually this is at the end, but we'll start off at the beginning about the author. That's me, or that was, well, my hair was pretty short. You know, I, everybody's got the COVID hair now a little bit longer. Uh, so vital statistics on me. Yes, I am from St. Louis. So that's how I got connected here, was part of SLPA when I lived in town there. Uh, but since I've moved to California now, it's a little hard to make those meetings, a bit of a drive. So uh, now with Zoom is one of the, one of the benefits of being on Zoom, we can catch up with some folks from other parts of the country. Um, I have written six books, all self-published myself, and with a lot of encouragement from my friends there at the SLPA. You know, the, the first book's always the hardest, right? And uh, writing that and spending like 10 years putting it all together and thinking about it. But once you get it out, you're like, hey, I could do another one. So you kind of get the bug and uh, write a couple more books. Um, my main job today now is to help people with their websites and their email marketing campaigns. So there's the books. Obviously you can get them in print. Uh, most people that I, uh, and I give away my books, uh, get them digitally. So little Kindle cover there. Mostly marketing based books. And, and my books have a lot, a lot of management principles in there as well, just cause that's my background is marketing and management. And then just some of the places uh, I've worked before I went on my own. Uh, maybe some some companies that you've heard of. And also if you're like, why are we listening to this guy? Like, well, at least I work for some <laughs> some companies that, that seem to know what they're doing. So I picked up a few things along the way. And like I said, I was a member of the SLPA when I was living in town there. So that was a great experience. It was good to connect with you guys and see that things are still going and going strong. It's really cool. All right, so blog your book. Where did this idea come from? Um, because I work in marketing and websites, digital marketing, um, I understand the importance of SEO, which stands for search engine optimization. And I know we're all at different levels. Some of you probably know more about SEO than I do. <laughs> and some of you might be like, I don't know what he's talking about. So we're, we're gonna, gonna go over that a little bit um, and I'll get into more details about how that works. But the idea of blogging your book really is to uh, improve your rankings in search and by improving your website. So that's that was the idea. So I had that idea a long time ago. I knew it was a good thing to do. You can download my whole book as an ebook on my website. And for me, my main business isn't selling books, it's doing the, the marketing consulting and building websites and things. So I give my, my books away. Um, but I knew also it would be a good idea to kind of break up the content of those books and turn the content into individual blog posts. Like theoretically, I knew that was a good idea, but never got around to it, right? We have some good ideas, but we might not get around to those ideas. So I, you know, being at home, having my son at home with me too, everybody at home and working from home said, hey, maybe you could help me out with the, the business a little bit. So I needed something that my son could do that would, number one, keep him busy. So he's just working a couple hours at a time, a couple hours a week, uh, but also keep it simple. If it's, it's gotta be some kind of project that, you know, once I show him how to do it, he can spend a couple hours on his own. So then I was remembering, hmm, you know, I've always wanted to blog my book and I, I never really got around to doing it. So that's where the actual execution of this came from, was from my son. So just to be clear, this is turning an already published book into blog posts because this is a good idea turning your blog post into a book, um, but that's not what I'm talking about today. It's the, we're, doing, we're going the other way. So we're talking about somebody that you already have a book, you've already have this really valuable uh, treasure of content, um, but really it's kind of trapped in that book form. So what we really want to like release that and help and put it all across your site by adding these blog posts and building up your website with all this great content that you've already done. But I will say going the other way works as well. One of my books is written that way. Uh, the 188 business tips. I said this year, I'm going to write a business tip every day. And I got 188. <laughs> so I didn't do it every day, but I still was able to put out a lot of content and actually I turned that then into a book and it's actually my, my thickest book. I wrote the most 
uh, through that process. So that's actually a, a good way to do it. And that helps your website as well. It helps your SEO. Um, but today we're going to be talking about going the other way. We've already done all that hard work of writing. It's just how do we get it onto our website? So doing this, turning my book into blog posts, and then sharing those posts on social media, I saw a huge jump in traffic. And I've had my website for like 20 years. I already have, you know, literally thousands of pages, which are mostly blog posts. But through this process of turning my book into blog posts and then uh, sharing like one or two a day and then sharing that on social media as well, I saw my website traffic triple. So I was like, hmm, maybe this, <laughs> maybe this is a good idea. Uh, I should probably share this with people and then maybe even offer it as a, a service that my company provides. So here's the benefits of blogging your book. It really all comes down to that content, like I mentioned earlier. Um, when you take it out of the book and turn it into blog posts, you're creating all these individual pieces of content that's easier to share. Uh, so one way you can share that would actually be guest posts. So I don't know if you've heard of that, but that's where you go, go to someone, maybe you know, maybe you don't, um, and you say, hey, I know you have a website, I know you have a blog, can I, can I share some of my, my content, write a post? And if you've got all these excerpts from your book, um, you can share that as a blog post on their site. And I think it's actually a really good thing you could do even in the SLPA. There's a way you can support each other by doing those guest posts on each other's sites. Um, it's, a bit, it's a big benefit to the site owner as well, because like, we, like I said, adding pages to your website helps to grow your site. So it's beneficial to you and it's beneficial to the person writing it or adding that content because they get more exposure and they get links back to their website. So that's guest posting. Uh, social media, duh. <laughs> you know, we have the social channels there. If you're, every time you do a blog post, you want to add that to your social channels. And I'm going to show you examples of these in a, in a minute. And then RSS feeds. So RSS stands for really simple syndication. But it's actually really confusing. Uh, this really trips people up. And a lot of people don't take advantage of these. Really what it is on your website, if every time you add a blog post, um, it adds it to this feed, which is this, you can find it through a link. So when you have that link, you can add that to, like I have added to my Amazon profile. So every time I do one of these blog posts, an excerpt from my book, it updates my Amazon profile. It keeps adding all these excerpts from my book. And then email content. So once we've turned the book into blog posts, we've got these nice little chunks of content that we could turn into maybe a newsletter, which I saw, you know, you have a speaker coming up that's gonna be talking about you having your website and newsletters, which is, you know, very similar to what I do. So this is a good way to create that content. So the guest posting, again, I won't go through all these individually, but it's a really powerful thing to do as far as getting, getting exposure and marketing yourself online digitally. A lot of, lot of value to doing that. And then this is the RSS feed I was mentioning on Amazon. So it doesn't look exactly like this. I kind of cut out some pieces to highlight, but if you are selling on Amazon, so Sean, make sure you get this set up. You want to get in there and fill out your profile and like I said, you can add a feed from your blog to your Amazon profile, and it'll automatically update this every time you add a blog post. Pretty cool. And then social media, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this and how these things look, but just an example of how it looks uh, on Facebook when I do an excerpt from my, my book as a blog post on Facebook, LinkedIn, so those are two different books, what they look like. And then back to the email content. So I highly recommend you have some kind of newsletter. And today having that newsletter list those, and email contacts, it's always been important, but it's becoming more and more important because you control that relationship with those people, that direct relationship. And social media, one of the issues with it is, you know, like Facebook's not your website. It's Zuckerberg's website. So for that reason, you want to have your own website, but also the, those relationships you have there, likes and followers and things, and that's all good and you should, you should use it, but you don't control that either. That belongs, <laughs> that belongs to Zuckerberg. And some of the things that are happening right now with the privacy 
concerns and things that are being clamped down on, uh, that stuff's not going not to be as valuable as it used to be. And there's going to be a lot less of you even knowing who those people are and being able to talk to them. But if you have their email address, it's totally different. You can talk to them whenever, however you want, and you have direct control over that relationship. So I highly recommend using good old fashioned email. And, and think about it too, every time you sign up for a social media account, because people are like, ah, oh, we don't use email anymore. They ask for your email address. So <laughs> email is still definitely important and everybody still really lives in their inbox. So that's why creating the email content is important but it can be a challenge because how do I come up? What do I say? What do I send to people? So I recommend, again, this is a nice formula you can use. This weekly, if you can write one blog post, then monthly you've got four blog posts, right? That becomes your monthly newsletter. You send out those blog posts as your newsletter. And if you're blogging your book, and you got, you know, like a hundred posts that you made, you can have your newsletter set for the next year. And when you send out those four blog posts and you wanna put like one piece of promotion in there, whether it's to, you know, read your whole book or contact you, connect with you, buy something, maybe, you know, if, if, you're, if you're selling products or maybe you wanna give a discount on your book. So that's, that's, the, that's the formula. You got the 80-20 rule. I think that's called the Pareto principle. So you got 80% helpful content. You know, you're not just throwing ads at people. You're like, hey, here's some stuff I think you might find useful. And by the way, I also have something special for you, this promotion. So that's how we were able to create our monthly newsletter and taking advantage of those blog posts to do it. So it really comes down to improving your SEO because that's how traffic is driven online is through the search engines. So just to be clear, Search engine, search, <laughs> search engine optimization is making sure you show up on the search engine results page or SERP when people search for keywords and then the higher the better. So that's a SERP. We call in the biz a SERP, search engine results page, which is Google. Uh, that is Google, it just has that extra special uh, artwork on there today. And you see here, what I highlighted, so the first couple of results are from Amazon. And then these next two are those blog posts that I did. So, wow, that really works. <laughs> Doing those blog posts helps you to show up and search. So we're talking about the keywords. So what are keywords? So let's say uh, you are you have a website about widgets, widgets.com. So just naturally on your website, you're gonna have pages that say, hey, we got lots of widgets, we specialize in widgets. And those become the key words on your site. That's what your site is about. And that's what Google's looking at. So when people go to the search engine like Google, they do a keyword search, um, which usually are questions. You know, what are the best widgets? And since Google is looking at every website, they're gonna say, hey, this widget.com seems like it's got a lot of information about widgets. So that's a good place for me to send you. And so that's why it's gonna rank higher. Because if you think about it, Google's job is to give good results to their customer. So they're gonna look at what do they think is the best website. Um, so SEO can be a little bit confusing. Um, there's more than two, you know, 200 things that can help you your site rank better, or rank higher. Um, keywords are very important, having links back to your site. Those are probably the two most important, but really just focus on having a good experience for the people visiting your site. Are you helpful? Is there good information? Is it easy to find things? Um, because that's what Google's trying to figure out. Is your site a good destination for people visiting? So there's no reason to kind of try to figure out all these strategies or even hire an SEO company. It's really just about, hey, is my website providing a good experience for the people visiting? If you do that, Google's gonna like your site, I promise. So the more keywords we have means the better our SEO is gonna be. So more blog posts equals more keywords and more keywords equals improved SEO. So someone on, uh, on a search engine page, they're, they're, I'm sorry, a searcher's typing keywords into the search engine, it's showing up on the search engine results page, and then it's finding your site that's containing those keywords. So more blog posts means 
better SEO. Because more blog posts equals more traffic. Uh, so this is a study done by HubSpot. So they're a digital marketing company. And sorry, I know the graphics a little bit blurred, but what it's showing is at between 50 and 100 pages, or, or I'm sorry, blog posts on your site, the more traffic you're going to get. And that at that at that place right there, 50 to 100, that's where you kind of see the hockey stick take off. You're going to get more leads to your website. So the best best way to build your website and add pages is doing a blog post because every time you do a blog post, you're adding a page to your website. So what is a blog post worth? Well, this is, I think I got this from Fiverr or something like that. Just, you know, going online, you can hire people. Everybody on here is charging over a hundred dollars per blog post. And this orange girl is charging $350 for an SEO optimized blog post. So it is, <laughs> That's because it is valuable. This is how the internet works. And that's why your book is so valuable. All that awesome, unique content that you've already created, it's just a matter of getting it onto your website the right way. So again, just seeing the results. And then here's Jeannie. Here's Jeannie's book. So for Jeannie, we just you know took her book and started pulling out sections and creating this template. And so this is what I recommend. So, uh, you know, you might never see me again, but I don't, I don't care if you don't hire me or whatever. I want, you, I want everybody to be doing something like this because I want your book to get out to more people. So this is kind of the formula. Um, at the beginning, beginning, it says, hey, this is an excerpt from the book. And then we got a nice picture of the book cover. And then just that section there. And sorry, I cut it off. But at the end, then you want to have a call to action, which is, you know, continue reading, download the whole book, buy the book, or whatever you want to do. So that's another tip on your website. You don't want any dead ends. You always want to tell people what they should do next because they don't know <laughs> and they don't have to do it, but you really should say, hey, if I was you, this is the next thing I would do. So we have the kind of this formula with, hey, introducing the book, the picture, and then that next call to action, which typically is going to be, you know, keep reading the book. And then this is my friend, Lisa. So Lisa's awesome. Um, she's a speaker and trainer that helps people learn how to be speakers and trainers. So uh, really cool. And uh, you can see this a little bit different format. Everybody's blog is going to be different, but you know, that's, that's the picture that she wanted for hers. And uh, a lot of us, if we're authors, um, we're probably going to get asked to speak. So she's a good resource for that. And then also a lot of speakers tend to write books because then you have something to sell in the back of the room. So they're very complimentary products. And then this is Kathleen, who I really love her artwork. Um, and her thing, whole thing is about, you know, grow a pair of antlers, be a fearless buck. So again, there's different ways to present this on your blog and it's really, really up to you. But just again, you just wanna make sure you're being very clear. This is an excerpt from the book because ultimately you want people to read the whole book. This is just kind of a, a taste, a sample of it. And there's different ways to lay that out. And then this is for my website, which, you know, even on my site, once I changed to the other book, I kind of changed how I presented the material a little bit. So who should blog their book? So this is ideally for people that are self-published or you at least have the rights to the book. It's okay if you have a publisher, it's just, it's easier if it's self-published because you can do whatever you want with your book. So that's kind of the ideal uh, person to be doing this. Uh, works great for nonfiction because again, you're providing good information and you're using your books for promotion. So I'm like the perfect <laughs> person to do this and that's why it worked well for me. So people like me that they're really using the books to promote their business, but I would say, uh, so I know some people are hesitant, you know, like maybe they've written a story or uh, a fiction book. I, I still think it's a good idea to do this because again, you're getting so much more exposure for your baby, your book that you wrote. Um, and I know some people are hesitant, like, well, if I put it all on my site for free, people can 
come read the blog post. They don't have to buy my book. But to be honest, if someone is going to come and read each individual blog post because they don't want to give you $20 for your book and they don't want to support you, it's like, okay, I think that's kind of, they would probably just go ahead and buy your book. And if they're not going to do that, they're cheap and they're not going to buy your book anyway. So I wouldn't worry about it. So I would highly recommend that, you know, if you have some kind of website and you have a book that you do this in some form. And again, even if you're like, hey, I don't want to do the whole book, just, just do a section of it and, and see what happens, see what kind of response you get. So obviously you should blog your book because we're all authors here, right? Uh, we've either already written one or you're in the process of writing one. So you're just thinking ahead of, of how this is going to be a way that you can promote it. And just think of Gutenberg. Man, what would we do without Gutenberg? What if Gutenberg would have been like, I don't know, man, it's too hard. All that putting letters down and ink and stuff. We, we wouldn't have the printing press. So, you know, what, what you guys have created or in the process of creating, like, this is so cool, your book. So I just really want to encourage you to get more exposure and let more people know about your book and what you're doing. So that's the purpose of this. So if you are ready to blog your book, just get ready for a lot of cutting and pasting because that's <laughs> mostly what it is at this point. Um, and if you want to save your you save some time and tedium, uh, then I can help you out. And actually, you know, you'll be keeping my son busy because he's the one <laughs> who's going to be doing it. And the cost, I want to keep it cheap and accessible. Um, it's not really my main business, but I do think it's something that could help people out. So I wanted to keep the price down. So it's $99 to set it up because it does take some time to kind of get everything set up and get the templates set. Um, and then it's $25 a post or five posts for $99. And if you're an SLPA member, we'll do the first 10 posts for $99. So that's the end of the commercial. But if you want to get started, got to have that call to action. Uh, you can go to blogyourbook.com, which actually is going to redirect you to my a page on my website, but that's easier to remember than how to spell my name for sure. And if you have any questions for me, like even if you're doing it yourself, I'm happy to help you out, give you some tips, some advice. Uh, there's my contact information. And also I am available for guest speaking. Um, I don't charge for my speaking because again, it's just a way for me to get more exposure. Um, and so I will take any questions you guys have about how to blog your book. Well, I'll make a comment because um, it never occurred to me to do this, you know, like the blogging thing. So like I got the kids book. So just while you were talking, it occurred to me, well, you know, I, I could just do a blog on each page in the, in the, in the, in the, in the book, you know, because, because my, my books are a little unique because it's actual things we do. You know, we went to the store or went to a park or, so everything in a book is something we actually did. So I'm pretty sure awesome. it's a page of information for that, you know. Come on. Anyone else? Come on. I have a question about uh, books and, you know, when you take your book apart and you do these blog posts and then you're also posting them out, out there, is that, um, by any chance, is that repeating content that Google does, doesn't like? Wow, that's an SEO question. That's a good, that's a good question. <laughs> um, well, no, you're not repeating it because it really doesn't exist on your site until you do this. When, so like my whole book is on my site, like as a PDF, but Google doesn't look at that the same way. This is like taking it and, and you know, pasting it in as a blog post. So it's, no, it's not, it's not duplicate content. Okay. And even like on social media, like there's a little excerpt, but that's, that's actually a, a link back to your site, which is another thing I don't think I mentioned, but every time you post to social media, all those links are coming back to your website, which Google likes to see people linking back to your website, even if it's social media. Okay. Okay. Right, thank you. Thanks, Peggy. Mm -hmm. I think Sean has a question. Sean has a question in there. Uh, in is the in the chat? chat? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, he, he's asking, do you use WordPress to create your websites? Uh, I know some coding and I have one Microsoft certification, but I have never um, on my own to independently create my website. So. 
Yeah, we're, it works with WordPress for sure. We're, WordPress is, you know, like 40% of the internet is WordPress. Um, so I use Squarespace because I think it's, it's easier for me to use and for my clients. I'm more of a marketing person than a technical person. Um, and I know how to word, use WordPress, but it's a lot of extra work. Um, but I do know because one of, one of the clients had WordPress um, and I can, do it, I can do this for them in WordPress. Um, one thing to look at for whatever Hello. software you're going to use, or if it's something new, is the, the ability to copy a blog post. <laughs> so, because you kind of have that template and it, it makes it a lot faster, but I, I, you know, one of those authors I did it for, she had a completely different system I'd never even heard of and he couldn't copy a blog post. So I kind of, I kind of had to copy and paste everything over every time. So it took much longer <laughs> uh, to set hers up. And that's actually part of why I wasn't charging that like initial setup charge, but after working with her, I'm like, okay, I got I to charge, you know, at least 99 bucks to get started because that ended up being a big project. So whatever you use, so Squarespace, you can copy a blog post, WordPress, you can copy a blog post. So I'll just make sure you can do that. Great question, Sean. And you mentioned, you just mentioned Squarespace. Gina mentioned you did Squarespace for her. Uh, yes. Another one here from Todd is a website question. How much should you worry about your site's website speed? Uh, that is a, an important factor. It's become more and more important. So one of the things I do, most of my, my clients already have websites. They just want to update them. So I'll do a, like a free site audit uh, initially to see if they're interested in, in hiring me. And that's the first thing I check is <laughs> how fast is your site? And there's a way to check on Google, and I don't even remember where it is, but I always just Google a uh, Google speed test. And you just type in your website's address and it'll tell you, it gives you a ranking from zero to hundred of how fast your site is. Cause they don't like sending traffic to slow sites. So it'll definitely knock you down in the search rankings. Nobody knows for sure how much, but they've made it very clear that that's important. And they tell you, they'll even, if you're connected with them, they'll even send you emails telling you, hey, you got a problem with this page. It's slow, you need to fix it. Um, and it will tell you what is slowing down your site. Typically, it's images and uh, when you embed scripts or code to do certain things. Like, even, like YouTube, you get like that little code that you put on your site, that's a script. So it's really the page has to like go there, find that code, and then go to YouTube and get the video and come back. So those are usually the two things that slow down sites. Good question. That's very, that is very important. These blog posts are all really fast, though. What was the next one? Your your turnaround time, create you know, doing what you do, creating websites and posts. Yeah. Oh, I'm fast. I'm really fast because I've been <laughs> I've been doing this for for a long time. Um, I used to charge by the hour, and then I realized, mm -hmm. well, no, because <laughs> I I could go really fast. So usually, what slows down the process is uh, getting the content from the client, like they're not giving me, they don't not tell me what they want to say. They're not giving me the images they want. So that's what slows it down. But if I have all that stuff, usually in about, for work time for me, usually in about a day, I can, it would, and I'm doing smaller sites, you know, usually 10 pages or less. Um, I can usually put it together in about a day. But that's also because I've done it for so many years, I've learned what I need to do. So that's why I can do it faster now, because I've learned, you know, the hard way <laughs> on some things, but yeah, I can do it pretty quick. And then the next question was, um, what's a typical length of a blog? Uh, Lydia is asking, is it a couple of paragraphs or how long is it? Yeah, so what I've said is, you know, for my service, I'll go up to a thousand words and there's, there's conflicting uh, recommendations on that. Um, so it depends on the, the people visiting your site. Um, you know, you want to cater to them, but you know, the short answer is having some shorter and some longer content is good. Um, having longer content is usually harder. So that's where people have a problem doing that or writing things longer or, or paying someone to write more for them. So that's usually where there's a shortage. And so people are, a lot of people are recommending, Hey, you really need a lot longer blog posts. But again, part of it depends on your audience too. My, my marketing book, this happened to be lots of short little segments. So it was perfect to turn all those into individual blog posts. And they're less than a thousand words, they're shorter. 
but they're all kind of complete concepts as well. Okay. And then Rochelle, I think you need to ask, uh, you got, can you work with site ground maybe? So I, I can look at it. So if it's a site, you know, software I haven't used, I can definitely take a look and let you know. All right, and then the next one was from Diana. I think you already answered that about how many words in a blog post. And, uh, yeah. Rec next one, Deborah, recommended size for photos, for images? Uh, smaller is better. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. Cause I just went through this with a client because they were giving me like 10 megabyte images. Um, I think the, I think the recommendation is uh, 100 kilobytes max for a photo and then 500 kilobytes max for the, the whole page later on. I'm pretty sure you can just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. yeah. Google and act like I know it, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So smaller, smaller than you would think, especially I, I was working with, with an agency and I thought they would know. So they gave me really great photos of the designer. They have a graphic designer, uh, but they're huge files. And online, you can't see that. It doesn't make a difference. You can't see it. It's not going to be any sharper on someone's screen or, or their phone for sure. <laughs> so that's, that's usually what they, they're too big because people don't know. And uh, that's definitely a way you can speed up your site is uh, optimize the images. All right. And then uh, this next one here is about videos. Is there a better way to have videos on the site if YouTube slows them down? Not really. <laughs> it's kind of, so you just, I'm just saying you got to balance. So like if you, if you really need that video, just realize, okay, that's, Maybe I need a dedicated page, maybe not have a bunch of videos on one page. So, because it, it is doing it by page too. It's not necessarily your whole, whole site. So when it's, when it's reading it, it's like looking at individual pages. So maybe you've got too much stuff on one page that's like really getting slow. So you can, you can spread it out. But if you want a video, uh, you, that's really the only way you can do it. You're gonna have to embed it um, with another service, you know, Vimeo or YouTube. So I know there are, there are other services. I don't know if one's faster than the other. Um, I would think since YouTube's owned by Google, and that's what they do. <laughs> I would assume that would be a good choice. But to be honest, I haven't like compared different video systems. But yeah, it's just it's pros and cons. You know, you just got to kind of you know what balance out your goals and and just I think the important thing is understanding. You know, every time you do that, it, there's there's a cost to it in a way. And I, you know, some of the things I do with clients or even auditing their site, they'll have, I had someone had a video telling people how to use their website. I was like, well, what do you, <laughs> I mean, I feel bad because the person had great intentions, but like, if someone doesn't know how to use your website, the video is not going to help. Why just make your website better? Um, plus like who wants to watch that? It's just, so making sure all that content, or I have, you know, a lot of clients, the, the homepage will have like a giant picture of a tree I'm like, well, you're, you know, you sell sponges. I don't know. But why do you have a picture of a tree? You're like, oh, it looked nice. So <laughs> every, everything you're doing should be kind of trying to drive people to that main call to action. If it's buying a product or getting a free appointment, a free consultation, whatever it is. So if it's a picture or a video, you really want it to lead into that, that call to action. What, what do you want them to do? How do you make your money? Um, and that's, that's really what I'm good at as far as the website stuff. I'm not like a graphic designer. I have more of a marketing background, but my, the main thing I do really well is looking at your site and saying, Hey, are you getting customers from this? Are you telling people what to do? Are you, are you letting people buy a lot of, a lot of websites, you know, don't even have a call to action period. Like, like, what do you want people to do? <laughs> like, if you don't know, how is someone who's never been to your site going to know what they're supposed to do? I digress. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the next one was uh, from Diane. Uh, how many keywords do you include in your blog post and how to decide what they are? Um, so I, I'm, I kind of go against the grain. I don't, I don't do that stuff. It's just write what you think people want to hear. Just like your book. You don't stuff keywords in your book. You don't say, well, this chapter, I'm going to say elephant 20 times because I want people. 
no, that's that's not the approach. I mean, people will tell you to do that online. They'll, they'll take your money and say, yeah, put 20, we're t- elephant on your 20 times. But who wants to read that? You know, just write well. And if you're writing well, the keywords are going to be in there. They're already going to be in there. You know, if you if you have, you know, the widget blog, you're just, you're writing about widgets. And honestly, that's what Google is trying to do. They've changed a lot too, where, the keywords are important, but they really want to know context and intention. And it's getting smart enough to know that. It's getting smart enough to know if you're just shoving a bunch of stuff in there. And, and if they think you're doing that, they're going to rank you lower because they don't want people to just go and say, this blog post is going to have this keyword 20 times because I want to rank for it. If it thinks you're doing that, it's actually going to hurt you. So just think about, don't even think about Google. Think about your friend or your client reading the stuff on your site. And make it really good. All right. Let's see. One more here, it looks like. If your book is fiction, can you give an example of how to compose the content of your blog post? Yeah, I, I think it's more just of where would you want to break up the content of, of the story? And I think it can be a little bit more of a challenge because if it is a story and people are kind of coming in the middle, they could be confused. So it is definitely more of a challenge, but I, it's still, I would do it because it's still kind of giving people a little taste. Um, or even maybe you just do like a little summary of the chapters. Um, maybe you don't just cut out a chunk. Maybe, you know, like if you're doing like a movie trailer, so make, make a little trailer for each chapter about this is what this is about. And you could turn that into a blog post. And again, think of where people are going to see this on, you know, it's going to end up on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff. So you you can make like a little commercial for your book or or even a chapter of your book. And then if somebody does come in there, and this is for fiction or nonfiction, you want to make it very clear, this is an excerpt from this book and go, you know, click here to go to the beginning, click here to read the whole book or buy the whole book. So that no matter where they're coming in, because they're interested in it, you're still going to say, read the whole thing. Here's the whole thing from start to finish. Alrighty. Good questions. Anybody else? Good info. Good stuff. I have, a, uh, I have a maybe a dumb question, but when you're talking about uh, all these people that write blogs for you, and then I heard you say, sometimes I can't figure out what the client wants to say, and that, that slows down <laughs> writing the blog. Mm-hmm. Are you saying that the clients write the blog and then these people post them everywhere? Or are you saying these people actually try to write in your voice and create a blog that gets posted? Well, not a dumb question. <laughs> um, so those examples I gave with like, you know, over a hundred dollars for blog posts. Yeah. Um, they're, they're writing the content for you. Oh, okay. So they're like, ghost, they're like ghost writing. Um, so the better ones will probably like the one that, and again, there's different quality, the better ones we are going to interview you, but even, even then they, they got to draw something out of you. So it's a process, but yeah, that's obviously more valuable if they're writing that for you. But conversely, that's what I'm saying. You're, if you've already have a book that you've written, you're sitting on, you know, thousands of dollars of content for your site that it's just a matter of, you know, reformatting it. Good question, Kevin. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Ben Stein here. Anyone? Anyone? (laughs) Mueller. Okay. Well, Michael, we really appreciate it. Uh, Great info. And uh, I think, yeah, Mike, so in the chat room, we'll leave this open for a few minutes. So if you want to download the chat, um, you can. You can get some of these, you know, um, contact information. Uh, and then I just want to remind everybody, uh, next month here, uh, our next meeting, okay, we'll have Sherry Fink, you know, she's a pretty well-known, uh, book person, uh, or kids book thing, and, uh, she's also a speaker and some other stuff, so, uh, you know, right hairstylist. Off, you know, uh, who are what? <laughs> is she a hairstylist too? Uh, you know, <laughs> she is an animated individual, so. That's cool. So that's, you know. So we'll have her next month. Um, so and if you haven't signed up on the email list so you can get the contact information, um, that'll do it. So 
Yeah, Michael, okay. can you put your contact information one more time in the chat? That way sure. people can get it if they download the chat. Absolutely. Thank you. And other than that, um, Peggy or Kevin, any, any other, Kevin or Kevin or Peggy, any other info, anything else? No, not right now. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, you great. can download the chat by just clicking on the three little dots to the right in the chat and it'll download it to your computer under documents and then Zoom. So I will leave this open for a little bit if you want to download chat. Sorry, Jeannie, I didn't mean to talk over you. That's yeah, I was just saying put put contact information in the chat. It's only Michael and me so far. <laughs> the two marketing people. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> I know yeah, you guys you want to know Jeannie. Jeannie is a connector. She's she's great. So you definitely want to make sure you connect with her. She knows everybody. We used to call people like her a sneezer. Just because she kind of got everybody. I guess we can't use that kind of language anymore. All right. Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate your time tonight. It was very interesting. Cool. Thanks, Peggy. I appreciate that. I got thumbs up from Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> thumbs, yes. All your friends. Okay. Big time. I kind of thought it was possible to blog your book, but I didn't really understand the steps and you really laid mm. it out. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. And this is kind of new for me too. This is the first time I presented on it. Um, so I, I appreciate feedback, you know, if, if you're like, that was confusing or, or no, that was clear, whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll take all that too. Well, and I, you know, it's a topic that a lot of people probably aren't interested in because they don't think it's used. It's like normally, like tonight, I think we had what, 20, whatever it was, 25 or so people and you know, it's nothing against you, but people probably think, oh, blogging, I don't want to blog. And they don't realize that, you know, the information you put out tonight, uh, a bunch of us are going to be doing that uh, because it makes perfect sense, you know, but it's something people just aren't aware of. Uh, cool. Thanks, Warren. Oh. Yeah, it was great information for me. Yeah. I have a book coming out in August or in October. I wish it was coming out in August, and this is going to be very helpful. Awesome. Glad to hear it. And then Rachel, I don't know if she's still here, but yeah, I mean, if she could show some of those images, I mean, that, that would work awesome. I mean, it, it's good on your blog, but that's just great on uh, social media too. Yeah. Imagine that on Instagram, like sharing some of those images and then having it linked back to her website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty powerful. All right. So again, so uh, we'll leave this up a few minutes if you're going to download yeah, I'm going to turn off the recording now.